as you learn about psychophysics, one thing that I absolutely want you to know would be the names of two very important psychophysicists. The first of these is E. H. Weber. E. H. Weber was a psychophysicist who made a very important and very useful contribution to psychophysics, specifically what we call the Weber fraction. Now the definition of the Weber fraction is the amount of stimulation necessary to result in a JND, a just noticeable difference, is a constant fraction of the stimulus intensity. And I seriously doubt if many students immediately understand what is meant here. But it's a very simple concept and a very useful one. Think back to the student volunteer who was standing in front of class holding a 50 pound bag of Purina monkey chow and I was adding pieces of paper to see if they actually detected the difference, whether there was a J and D, a just noticeable difference. Well, this has been tested, and we know that one pound of weight needs to be added to the 50 pounds you're holding in order for the just noticeable difference to occur, in order for you to say, yes, it got heavier 50% of the time. So one pound over 50 pounds is a vapor fraction. And now, if I added another 50 pound weight to what you're holding, and you're holding 100 pounds, I know that I have to add two pounds in order for a just noticeable difference to occur. In order for you to say, hey, it got heavier 50% of the times I present you with that change. I also know that it takes a fifth of a pound to result in a JND if you're holding 10 pounds. So again, the Weber fraction involves the idea that the amount of stimulation Necessary to result in a just noticeable difference is a constant fraction of the stimulus intensity. I'm not going to ask you to memorize that definition, but I do want you to be able to look at a Weber fraction, like one pound over 50 pounds, and tell me, well, how much weight do I have to add when it's 100 pounds that you're already holding? I also want to point out that the Weber fraction varies with sensory modality, and there are also charts that you can look up, and you can see the different Weber fractions for different aspects of our sensory functioning. And again, E. H. Weber, a very important psychophysicist whose name you need to know. The second of these psychophysicists whose names you need to know is Gustav Fechner. Just to show you the importance of Fechner to psychophysicists, even today, I'll tell you a story about what happened to me in graduate school and I'm still very bitter about it. One day as I came into the building in New York City where I was doing my research, I got to the laboratory and I noticed that all the staff, everybody was wearing Fechner Day buttons. And I didn't know why, I'll be honest. So I asked and I was told it was Gustav Fechner's birthday and that they were all celebrating it. And I thought, well, that's nice, nerdy, but nice. I'm not a psychophysicist. I was more interested in learning theory. So I went about conducting my research, but subsequently I was given a test as a graduate student. You are learning new material and taking tests as well as conducting research. And there was a question about Fechner's birthday that I got wrong because I didn't pay much attention to the whole thing. And I still am a little bitter about missing that question on a test. But it shows the passion with which psychophysicists operate. So what was Fechner's contribution that warranted all of this adulation? I agree it was very important. He presented what has come to be called Fechner's Law, and there aren't many laws about behavior in the field of psychology, but Fechner's Law is pretty useful and it holds true in a variety of situations. Basically Fechner's Law is S equals K times the log of I. And all he's doing here is trying to mathematically calculate the relationship between events as they occur in the environment and our psychological experiences of those events. So S represents sensation, a psychological sensation, what's happening inside of you. And I represents stimulus intensity, the intensity of the physical stimulus as it occurs in the environment. It could be pounds for weight, decibels for sound, and so forth. And this law holds true for the most part. S equals K times the log of I. You can know the physical magnitude of a stimulus and be able to predict your psychological experience of it. Amazingly, this holds true for the most part across all of our sensory modalities. So S is psychological sensation. That K in the formula is the Weber fraction. And we then take the log of I or the logarithm of stimulus intensity. I'm not going to ask you to memorize Fechner's Law, 
or use it to calculate psychological sensations. But I want you to be able to look at this formula and see, well, on one side you have the psychological sensation, and on the other side of the formula, on the other side of the equal sign, you have the intensity of the physical stimulus. You are literally able to mathematically calculate the relationship between those two things. And also know that Gustav Fechner, very famous, very important, much revered psychophysicist, 